Hey to Nolan High School, this is Mr. Aiden, and this is 5.2 Collective Properties. This is our last part of Solutions, and this is actually, um, some of it is a little bit difficult, if, but if you take it really slow through this vodcast, it'll make sense, um, as well as through the Google Docs quiz. And also, it's going to answer a lot of your questions about what happens to my freezing point, my boiling point, whenever we make a solution. But before we get to that, let's, let's start with what happens during a pure solvent. A pure solvent looks like this. And when we start to boil it, we, we start to, to take away, the heat goes and breaks the intermolecular attractions, like the hydrogen bonding or the dipole-to-dipole attractions, and our, our sol solvent, pure solvent, like water, would begin to boil. And how do we know when it's going to actually boil? Well, it's going to boil when the, when the vapor pressure, when the pressure to be a vapor is equal or opposite to the atmospheric pressure pushing down. Okay, once it's equal or opposite, you begin to vaporize or boil something. But when we make a solution, this is what's happening. When we make a solution, we have something else inside of the container. We have a solute that's inside the solvent. And it's preventing, if you think about it, the heat has to go into not only breaking the like the hydrogen bonding attractions, but it also has to break the attractions between the ions or the, the, the other substances as well. So what happens to the vapor pressure is the vapor pressure, when, whenever we make a solution, the vapor pressure actually gets lower. So in a solution, the vapor pressure always gets lower. The pressure to be a vapor is much more difficult. Okay, it's much more difficult. And we can see that in one of our equations, um, if we just have a pure solvent right here, like the pressure of water, the, the, the pressure of water might be um, a certain bit of atmospheres, okay? But when we make a solution, the vapor pressure will go down because you can see what's happening here is we now, we don't have pure water anymore. We don't just have a pressure of water. We now have what we call a mole fraction, okay? We have the moles of water and it's inside a total number of moles. So actually, in any fraction, you can tell what any fraction does to something that's pure, it decreases it, doesn't it? That's why we call it a fraction, okay? And so the pressure, the, the vapor pressure goes down, and we can use this little pressure equals the original pressure times the mole fraction in order to figure that out. Now your big question is, what happens to the freezing point and the boiling point whenever we make a solution, okay? And when we make a solution, you can see we're going to need more heat, we're going to need to add more heat or absorb more heat to vaporize, which means the boiling point would go up. The boiling point of water is at 100 degrees Celsius. When you make a solution, it's going to go up to 101 or 102 degrees Celsius. Now, when we are going to freeze something, you're going to need to remove more heat in order to freeze it because it's going to be much more difficult to make those hydrogen bonding attractions and it, when you have something else inside of it and that's why we put salt on our roads uh, up north when it when it when it's really cold okay we put salt on those roads n not to 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 make the make the traction better but it actually pr makes a solution and makes the freezing point of water actually go down so the boiling point goes up Put your hand up top above your head. The boiling point goes up even higher. The freezing point goes lower, lower, okay? And if we take a look at, at one of our, this is a, a heating curve of a pure solvent, okay? And this is like water. Like uh, this line right here is going to freeze at 0 degrees Celsius. This line right here freezes at 100 degrees Celsius. But what we can see is the boiling point will actually make this line go up. The boiling point, it has a change in the temperature. So the boiling point actually goes up, but we can see what happens to the freezing point. The freezing point actually goes down. This gets lower. And so you can see you're going to be a liquid for a longer period of time when you make a solution, when you make a solution. Okay? We have one main problem whenever we want to find this change of temperature, this change of temperature, and we just have to look at our equation sheet. And on our equation sheet, we want to zero in on three different equations. The first equation is right at the bottom, which is this delta T, either freezing or boiling, equals I K, which is a constant, times molality. We know what that I is. It's the Van Hoff factor. Okay, usually it's going to be one, guys, um, but it could be a number. The second equation we want to zero in on is the molality equation. Molality equals moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. And the last equation is right up top, which is the moles is equal to mass over the molar mass. 
Okay? And with these three equations, we can solve any colligative properties question. Okay? I want to go through a question and, and make sure that um, you understand how I go through it and why, why we do it. We have a solution that's 5 grams of laurel alcohol in 100 grams of benzene. We're making a solution. And you can see what happened to the freezing point. It was at 5.5 and it went down to 4.1. They gave me the K value and they want to have me calculate the molar mass. And so anytime I do any one of these problems, what I want to do right away without any hesitation is I want to write down those three equations. Delta T equals I, K, M. M is equal to moles per kilogram. That's the molality equation. And moles is equal to mass divided by molar mass. And without hesitation, if I write down these three equations, I have this problem pretty much solved at this point. Now I just have to plug in some numbers. The change of temperature was we were at 5.5 degrees Celsius. Now we're at 4.1 degrees Celsius. And so the change was 1.4 degrees Celsius. That was what the change was. Okay? Lower alcohol, we don't know what it is, so it's probably an organic substance. So that means my Van Hoff factor is 1. It only splits up into one particle. I know what my K is. My K is really nice. It, they can tell me what the, the K is. They say the K is 5.12. So I'm going to put 5.12 degrees C per M, which means I have molality right there. What do I have to do right here? I just divide. And when I divide, I get a molality of 0.2734 molal. Okay? What do I do with that number? I plug them right in there. Okay, I move him right up to the very next equation. And so if you see, I have the molality there, okay, 0.2734 mole. And what's going to go in the denominator is the kilograms of the solvent. So I'm going to take that 100 grams and make it 0.1 kilograms, 0.1 kilograms. And so I have moles right here. How do I, what do I do algebraically? All I have to do is multiply those two together. And when I multiply them together, I get 0.0. 2734 moles. Where does that go? He moves right up there. Okay. And if I ever want to find the molar mass, molar mass is grams per mole. So I'm going to take my grams and put it on the numerator. That's 5 grams. Divide by my number of moles. My number of moles is 0 0.02734 moles. And when I do that on a calculator, you'll end up getting a molar mass of about 183 grams per mole, 183 grams per mole, and that is my molar mass. So again, it just comes down to three equations, delta T equals IKM, M is equal to moles per kilogram, and then to find molar mass, we just do grams per mole, okay? Guys, that's it for colligative properties. I hope this somewhat made sense. Try it out on those Google doc, that Google Docs quiz, and uh, we'll kick it on the other side, all right?